Antiphon Hum I'll be right here, Elliot. That wasn't even my heart. That was I know my you lungs. don't have one. E.T.'s going to give me smoker's lung. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to start uh, snorting E.T.'s remains. And welcome to another episode of Crips and Corks. I think this is 53? No, 54. Because I'm even numbers. Yeah, this yes, is 54. 54 something episode like... 54 of Crips and Corks. I am your host, DJ, here with my co-host, Paul. As usual, and today I'm non-denominational Superman, <laughs> <laughs> and DJ is I am Felix from Saltburn. Period, and I say I'm non-denominational Superman because this costume, if you look at the logo, it's like Superman, but not. It, you're um, Dollar Tree Superman. I am Dollar Tree Superman. Actually, a little behind the scenes of where I got this costume. I actually got it from when I was in high school. I played Superman when I was in Color Guard for one of our band oh. shows. I was the star. I was Superman. And it still fits today. I don't mean to flex on the hose, but... Oh! It still fits. Yeah. Period. I hope you're proud. Wait, did you do the curl on purpose? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I tried to do the Superman curl. I, I just curl. noticed it now as I looked at you and I was like, oh my God, he has the Superman curl. Yeah. And I, for a second there, I was like, has Paul always had that curl, but he always has it swept back? Yeah, yeah. So I tried to do the Superman curl, but it didn't really work out because my hair's a little too long, which speaking of which, how did my week go? My hair's a little too long and I'm going to get a haircut, right? But you're not going to go to the Great Clips. No, I've been trying to convince... See, one thing about me is I'm balding. And I've been trying to convince my other balding friends to shave... <laughs> I am the least <laughs> balding member of our friend group. That's true. You do have the best hairline out of all of us. I have the best... Not only do I have the best hairline, I would argue, sorry, Dad, that I have the best hair. Yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe. But <laughs> Coming at me I've been left trying field. to convince all of my balding friends that we should all shave our head together and no one will freaking shave their head with me. And I'm trying to get the solidarity, the brotherhood of my fellow balding men in Pittsburgh well, to we shave said, their heads. We said, okay, I will shave my head with you. Okay. But we'll, we'll do it as a contest for the podcast. All right. We're shaving our heads. But w- Solidarity. Yes, but we have to come up with, a, like, a metric of, like, we have to get so many of something. Like, so many listens, so many comments, so many likes, mm-hmm. so many views. And then we'll shave our head and film it and put it on the YouTube. Period. I'm here for it. And one thing, real quick thing I want to bring up about balding. When people come to you, you're balding, and they say, oh, just fly to Turkey and get your hair in line done. Just get a hair transplant. That's classist. Not everyone can afford that. I can't afford to go to fucking Turkey for hair. Like, that's classist. And it pisses me off. I have a whole rant about it, which I'll save for maybe uncorked at some point or something. But it's classist. How was my week? Thank you for asking, Paul. My week was fine. Um, I was on vacation last week, so first week back to work. That was a little bit of a struggle getting back into a routine. Especially after vacation, yeah. yeah. But Heartstopper Season 3 came out this week. How did that go? (gasps) Oh my god, all the emotions came all pouring out all at once. Mm -hmm. Um, In eight episodes, I cried like 16 times. Ooh, girl, that's a lot. That's twice an episode, no, girl. No, I will say, yeah, on average, it was not strictly twice an episode. There were a couple episodes where I cried more. There were some episodes where I didn't cry at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that I only, like, wept three times. <laughs> <laughs> the rest There's of a the... big difference between crying and weeping. Um, the rest of them was just, like, tears, like, coming out of my eyes oh my as I God. sat there. Jesus. Um, you haven't watched it, have you? No, I am going to get there. Maybe tomorrow, because my day has freed up tomorrow, which, awesome. So maybe tomorrow, probably not, but we'll see. Maybe you will invite me over so I can experience a second time with you. We'll see, probably. <laughs> maybe I need um, to take this journey by myself so I can weep on my own, have my weeping moments. 
But maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but we love Joe Locke. We love mm. Kit Connor. I love Oh, yes. We love them all. Honestly, great cast. I great definitely cast. did not pay $60 for Nick and Charlie plushes that I found on Instagram today. DJ, my sister in Christ. What are you going to do? With... Well, actually, we know what you're going to do with those plushes, honey. Oh, d- don't make this dirty. <laughs> don't make those sweet Bitch, little gay boys. What are you going to do or... with fucking plushes? What I don't know doing? the same thing that I do with the Mothman plush I got from Point Pleasant. It's going to sit on a shelf and give me joy every time I look at it. Okay, girl. All right. <laughs> Do you do you have anything for Paul's pop culture? Corner? I do. There is something I would like to discuss very quick. So, as you all may or may not have seen, Olivia Rodrigo's Gut Store is coming to Netflix. Okay. And I think it's very interesting. We're living in this day and age in culture where like if you miss a concert, they're going to put it on Netflix or Hulu and something. And does that in some way take away from like the concert experience from those who actually experienced it or is it like an awesome thing because people get to like watch it. What I do think, you think I think it's an awesome thing. I did not get to see the Aeros tour live, but I did get to see the movie. Yeah. Um, and you saw both, and I'm sure you. I'm there is, mm-hmm. and I coming from an actor perspective, I did not like acting in movies. Mm-hmm. I liked acting in a theater where it was live and I could almost feed off the energy of the audience. That makes me sound like an energy vampire, but there's something about being in the room and hearing people's reactions or just knowing that they're there and it just adds something. Yeah. Um, So I think, and I mean, I prefer, I love movies, but I also really love going to the theater. Mm -hmm. And if I can see a play or a musical live rather than seeing a taping of it, I will take the live route because there's something about being in the room as it's happening live. Right. And plus if there's any like any little like fuck ups or mistakes, even in concerts. I think those fuck ups in the concert makes it more enjoyable sometimes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I mean, being on like back in the day when I was on musical theater, Tumblr and yeah. now sometimes ending up on musical theater TikTok and being on Taylor Swift TikTok. It's so funny because like on both sides it's like, oh, did you, like it's like, oh, did you notice in Phantom of the Opera when like Christine tripped and she just kept singing and like she totally recovered? And it's the same thing where it's like, did you see Taylor like stumble but she kept singing? Yeah, yeah. And it's just this uh, moment and I always said in my acting classes to like actors who are younger than me a good actor makes no mistakes mm-hmm. a great actor makes a mistake and nobody realizes period and period for this discussion a good performer makes no mistakes a great performer can make a mistake and no one will realize very that very that so I guess takeaway, DJ loves to watch concerts on Netflix and he wants to see all future concerts on Netflix, Hulu, and etc. Well, that's also because I have like attention issues and sometimes I just have to take my phone off and scroll through Instagram for a couple minutes to recenter myself mm. or I have to pause and get up to go pee to like bring myself back to earth. Mm-hmm. So, Period. I mean, we've had this discussion before, like, I enjoy concerts, but I don't particularly like going to them because of my attention things. Okay, see, I love going to a concert. One thing about me, I'm going to go to the concert, I'm going to get the t-shirt, and I'm going to have a good old time. I will go to them. It's just, like, not my thing. T T. Well, sound off down below, guys. What do you think about having all these concerts on Netflix, Hulu, and etc.? Are we ready to get into I think we're ready okay. to drink. We're revisiting our favorite, I think I can say it's our favorite wine brand, Apothic. Yes, we stan Apothic. Today we're doing Apothic Crush. It is a soft red br- blend. It is described as velvety and smooth. Ooh. Inspired by the Apotheca, a mysterious place where some of the earliest wine was blended and stored, Apothic Wines offers truly unique wine experience. 
Crush, a decadent red blend with luscious notes of ripe red berries and hints of caramel rounded out by the velvety smooth finish made with passion. Ooh, girl, that sounds cool. Oh, you took that off so easy. I, I prepped it oh, off camera. Okay. While you're in the bathroom, I slid it off and then I slid it back on so that I wouldn't have to fight with it. Excuse the fuck out of me. Okay. So. Um, ASMR wine mechanical engineering. Ooh, girl. Ooh. No pop this time. Sorry, guys. No pop. I blame the wine opener. That's definitely on the wine opener this time, guys. But what does the cork look like? It's a regular cork. I was hoping, like, when mm. it popped off, it might make a little pop. Yeah. Oh, Do the... Well. Thank you. There you go, guys. ASMR pour. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me... mm, this one smells good. Okay. Uh, visual pour. It has notes of uh, citrus, disappointment, gutter. I'm I really won't excited. Tell citrus you said that. Oh. Foreshadowing. Cheers. Cheers. Damn. They did it again. Yeah, they always do it. They did it again, Apothic. You never cease to impress. Um, now I will say, I'm giving it a qualified four. Qualified four? I would probably give it a five, except I, um, drank an entire bottle of Apothic Red last night while FaceTiming with friends in Chicago. Period. Perfect uh, Friday night. And so it was, it was lovely, and I did not get... I got tipsy, but I did not get drunk, which was amazing. Mm. Um, but because that was another red blend, I'm a little redded out. Yeah, we do drink a lot of reds on the pod. Yeah, and I tried to find a white for this, but I couldn't find a white to That's go with okay. this story. And with that, Paul, let me tell you a story. Let's get into it, guys. So, on this podcast, we've discussed many stories, but only once before... Did we really tell a story from the first person? And that was in an eBay listing. But what if you experienced a haunted haunting and live tweeted the entire experience? Today, we're going to discuss a haunting, which is also an internet phenomenon. Today, we'll be discussing the story of Dear David. Dear David. Okay, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. I know of this. I don't really know like anything about it. So I'm super interested to hear like how this goes down, what's going on. And I think this has become a super common internet phenomenon, right? Um, maybe not common. It's mm -hmm. definitely happened before where people experience things and live tweet it. Although with Elon Musk taking over Twitter and it becoming X. Yeah, yeah. Um, huh. Yikes. Yeah, it's a little less common. Um, X is now kind of like... I'm I'm Macro still on know. it. Yeah. And it's... I mean, we all joke about like Facebook kind of being like a bunch of old people who have really close-minded views and they just mm -hmm. like yell into the echo chamber. Right. And Twitter's very much becoming that. Yeah, well, Twitter, in my opinion, is really the only good place to look at pictures of a spicy nature oh, if you're looking yes. for that twitter's yes. a very good place for that we've lost tumblr and all sorts of those things so twitter's like the go-to place for that yes and like this actually takes place on twitter doesn't it yes it does well twitter now x but that back then it yes was this twitter. is twitter so this is from when it was twitter so i am going to keep saying twitter okay so twitter um the way this story is going to go i'm actually going to just read the tweets out Okay. I will take pauses periodically to, like, explain, give context. But if you have a question, just stop me. Okay, period. Let's get into it. Let's see what Daniel, sorry, David has to say. So these were tweeted by Adam Ellis. Um, and you actually might know his work because he's a comic artist for BuzzFeed. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, hang on, let me. So, industry plant, wake up, sheeple. And we'll get into that. <laughs> let me 
real quick. Oh my gosh. Real quick while he is doing that. No, oh, I just want to show you. Okay. And I'll add this in. Oh, he does those. Yeah. Okay, those are so super popular. Really, okay. And I didn't realize, like I knew he was a comic artist and that he worked for BuzzFeed. I keep wanting to say Buzzsprout because that's a roasting site. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I actually did this research and I was like, wait, that's him? That's the Dear David guy? <laughs> Right. I didn't realize that. That's so weird. That's cool. And go over to our Instagram. And if you're driving, remember, don't pull over, take your hand off the wheel, close your eyes and go to our oh, Instagram. Um, for legal reasons, that is a joke. We do not actually endorse that. Sure. Um, and if you do it, please do not sue us because we are literally worth negative dollars. Right. You're not going to get shit. We do, we do not have Elon Musk money. Well, unless you want my non-denominational Superman costume. Stop. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> All right. On August 7th, 2017, Adam Ellis tweeted, So, my apartment is currently being haunted by the ghost of a dead child, and he's trying to kill me. Thread. Okay. All right. Spooky. The first time I saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis and saw a child sitting in the green rocking chair at the foot of my bed. He had a huge misshapen head that was dented on one side. I did my best to draw it. That's so crazy. That looks like one of those baby dolls that has like a dent in its head. Yes. Yeah, that's so weird. I don't like that. Um, check out the Instagram dump. It was like at the, you said it was at the side of his bed? Foot of his bed. Foot of his bed. Yeah. And he had sleep paralysis. Oh, shit. I had another dream a few nights later where I was in a library and a girl came up to me and said, you've seen Dear David, haven't you? I was like, who? And she said, Dear David, you saw him. In the dream, I say, okay. Um, sorry, I couldn't get all the tw Twitter feeds, so I'm reading it from an article. Okay, no worries. Um, so she goes on to explain the rules of interacting with David. Oh, wait, maybe... I it's can. a game. Okay. Maybe I can... So, it's giving Zozo a little bit if it's a game. You have to do this or whatever. Yeah. And honestly, it's really interesting that she already knows. So, I guess maybe I'll get into, like, the experience that yes. she Yes, so has. she explains the rules. And he only appears at midnight. Okay. And if you see him, you can ask him two. And only two questions. And only as long as you say, Dear David, first. Ooh. If you break the rules, if you ask a third question, or if you don't start the question with Dear David, he will kill you. Oh. He's going to... Okay. So what are the... So if you don't start with Dear David... So you and, can only ask two questions, yes. and you must start it with Dear David. Okay. That's easy. I can do that. So in a few few nights later, he has a different dream, and he sees David again. In the dream, I say, Dear David, how did you die? He mumbles, an accident in a store. I say, dear David, what happened in the store? He groans, a shelf was pushed on my head. Okay. I'm frozen with fear. I ask, who pushed the shelf? David doesn't answer. You only get two questions, bitch. I realized I've asked a third question, which I'm not supposed to do. At that point, I wake up absolutely terrified. And something that he didn't realize, but... I noticed immediately he broke both of the rules. He asked the third question and he didn't preface it with dear David. Exactly. And exactly. And you know what? Out of all the questions he could ask this supernatural baby, he chooses that like, dear David, what's the lottery winning number? Dear David, what's my soulmate's name? Dear David, how many dairy and queens are in say, Montana? And you and I, I have this debate with you all the time because every time we go on an investigation, you ask this question and it's, how did you die? And Okay, that's different because they're not like they're they're not necessarily evil, but like in the research that I've done into paranormal investigation, apparently ghosts really hate that question. Okay. I'll stop asking that question. But like when we're investigating, I feel like David has like some otherworldly knowledge that you're supposed to ask him, whereas a normal typical ghost on a paranormal investigation, they're just people. Is this, am I getting this wrong? Like, is David not, like, well, does he not have all the answers? Like, what's the point of the game if he doesn't have all the answers? I mean, I don't, it's, it's very, it's very gamifying life. Yeah. Um, 
So I don't know why he has these rules. Okay. Um, and we'll get into the theory at the end. So what happens if you ask him a question? Okay, sorry. You keep going. Okay. I'm sorry. I have... <laughs> I'll come so down. Adam then starts to do a lot of research. Um, he starts Googling around. Hang on. Let me get into another thread here. While he's doing that, make sure you go watch our TikTok, our Vlogoween special. I have been, we're on day five right now, Vlogoween on TikTok, posting every day. So make sure you're going out, you're watching those. Please like and comment and interact. I am finding my best. And when we get to day 15 and I run out of ideas and just post thirst traps, mind your fucking business, okay? We're doing what we gotta do in these streets. Are we there? Okay. Okay. The next couple days, I Google deaths in the city, but I can't find anything about a kid named David dying in a store. I even tried different names. Daniel, Dylan, Devin, nothing. A few weeks go by without incident. Sort of randomly, the apartment above mine is vacated, and I have the opportunity to move into it. It's a larger apartment, so I'm thrilled. Another month or two goes by, and I sort of forget about dear David. I think he lost track of me because I moved upstairs. But lately, something strange is happening. For the past four nights, my cats gather at the front door at exactly midnight and just stare at it, almost like something is on the other side. Oh. And there's a picture of the cats. That's so creepy. Not the cats just like looking at... And he's alone? Yeah, he lives alone. Oh, no. Jeez. That's another reason I don't think I could have pets. I don't want them looking at strange things. Last night, I got a weird feeling and looked out the people, and I'm dead certain I saw movement on the other side. When I opened the door and turned on the hall light, nothing was there, but my cats seemed unnerved, bushy tails, etc. And that's where I am right now. Dear David found me. I think I don't know what to do. I'll keep you updated. Update. For the sixth night in a row, my cat has walked over to the door promptly at midnight and stared at it. And there's a picture of him holding a clock. Showing just after midnight with the cat staring. That's so weird. So David must like... He likes midnight for some reason. Meet me at midnight. Well, that's part of the rules. He only appears at midnight. Oh, it's one of the rules. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that already. Okay. Period. Um, And then there is a video. It's only 45 seconds, but it's just the cat staring at the door. So I'm not going to bore you with it. Yeah, we don't need all that. I've seen plenty Um, of pussy. with, With... the tweet what is going on Mm. okay so i took a photo through the people because i'm too scared to open the door i feel like i saw something i couldn't tell so i mustered the courage to open the door nothing was out there but i took another photo look at this is it just me or is there something in the first photo right where the banister meets the shelves hiding on the stairs so there's the first photo okay now look where the shelf meets the stairs I don't see anything. No, I don't see a thing, girl. Am I missing it? Okay, see that little round bit? I guess. I don't know. People might be reaching on that one. I wasn't sure if it was a smudge or something, so I took a second photo frame inside. There was something out there. And we got two comparison pictures. Oh, there's another little thing poking out. So that's the first picture zoomed in, and then he took a second picture. Okay. All right. Okay. I deadbolted the lot and got locked and got into bed because I don't know what else to do. I can still hear my cat meowing at the door. I am pretty scared, and he posted this picture of his cat with the glowing eyes, which is terrifying. That's precious. Not the movie, but, you know. I think that's the end of the thread that I have in this window. Yes. Okay. Period. So we're going into the next thread, which speaking of threads, is anyone actually like on threads? Like what are we doing on threads? Some people actually are, but it's a lot of catfishing. Oh yeah. I don't mess with that. We're not going to threads. Okay. We're going to stay where God's light touches. And one thing I think is God's light does not touch on threads. So I'm not going to go there. So... In replies to that thread, um, Ellis also revealed that the building he used to be, his building used to be an old house that has been converted into apartments some time ago. Oh. Um, One Twitter user named at Isaac Fitzgerald tweeted, not to be all Dana Scully about this, but is there a chance that what you're seeing in the hallway is another cat 
parentheses, or other animal. Adam replies, nope, I live in a house. There's no real way for an animal to be in the hall. Oh my gosh. What if it was an animal? Um, at Aaron Pruner replied, but you said the apartment above you vacated. Adam replied, it's like a duplex. It's an old house that was converted into two apartments. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Now from August 10th to 11th, more of the same. It's been pretty quiet tonight. I'm going to try out a sleep talk app to see if anything happens during the night. I'm heading to bed, but the cats are back at the door. They only do this in the middle of the night. It's routine now. Okay. Okay. Several nights pass, but the cats continue to gather around the door at midnight. He posts a video, and here we go, just minutes before midnight, and it's the cat walking up to the... It's walking up to the door. Door and meowing. Meet me at midnight. Um, He noted that he was intending to get a sleep app so that he could record anything that happened while he was asleep. Um, Additionally, he attempted to draw a line of protection in front of the door with salt, as several Twitter users had suggested. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if the salt thing actually works or not, because I've never experienced it myself, but why not? Um, On August 11th, he tweeted, I used a sound app to record my apartment last night. It makes individual recordings each time and hears something. There were 33 recordings. Not 33. That's crazy. Are they going to play the recording? Um, I'm going to try here. Okay. What is that? Oh, no. He Stop. heard no. SoundCloud <laughs> rappers? That's Sorry. spooky, bitch. Sorry, I don't know why it just went into that. Not that was... SoundCloud okay. rappers. Okay. I bitch, have... if my... we get copyrighted by a SoundCloud rapper, I'm going to... Jump off a bridge. I'm sorry, Callie Uchis. I did not mean to play that. Yeah, Callie. Okay, let's... So, this is one of the weird recordings. Okay. Let's play it because it's at the beginning. Do you hear that weird snap or step at the beginning? Okay, but could it have been one of the cats? Because there's clearly two cats there. Yeah, but... wouldn't you notice, like, if your cats make this weird... No. I feel like not. Because, like, if you have two cats and... But you cats hear... are very light on their feet, so, like, the cat would have to have fallen to make that noise. What if it, like, jumped down from something? They're still very light on their feet. I mean, like, Dan has a cat and she jumps all the time and you don't hear her land. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. All right, I'll accept this one. Okay, um anything okay this one is weird because out of 33 recordings this is the only one that has that strange electric sound throughout would you believe that giraffes are 30 times more likely to get hit by giraffes are 30 times more like (laughs) sorry that's an ad (laughs) oh gosh not us giving free advertising to the giraffes They have enough advertising as it is. And of course, we can't go past it. Testicular difficulties. Meet me at midnight. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Uh, Yay. It almost sounds like static. Yeah. That's really interesting. And I'm probably going to have to send you both of those because they are so slight and just plug them into the episode. Hi, period. But Um, interesting. Interesting. Oh my God. I smell breadsticks and I don't know why or how, but I'm so hungry. (laughs) You're not having a stroke, are you? That's peanut butter. I thought it was toast. Burning toast, but I don't smell burning toast. I smell like fresh breadsticks, like Olive Garden breadsticks, oh, fresh out of the yeah. oven. Yeah, I do live near some uh, bakeries, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Okay, babe, I'm baking. This one <laughs> directly falls the electric static. Hang on, I'm gonna put on my mute just in case. That one's weird. I didn't like that. Hello. Hello. 
Okay, that could have been him in his sleep going, ugh. It, I mean, I would have to hear his real voice to yeah. tell, but... See, there's so many things we don't know. Okay. Um, the, these happen between 2 and 3 a.m. I have no explanation for them. I keep recording and share if I find anything curious. Okay. And another thing that he said in there, and I think... Oh, I missed it. The first is a stapping sound and what seems like a single step. It's an odd because I didn't get out of bed all night. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure the cats did. August 12, 2017. Getting the F out of my haunted apartment for the weekend. Peace sign, ghost emoji. And he posted a picture of him giving a peace sign. Oh, oh is he cute? What's he look like? Oh, he is cute. He's got a little touch of gray. Okay, okay, he's cute. I wonder what his number is. I wonder what his family's doing for Thanksgiving. I wonder if they want a third. Girl. Okay, anyway. Okay. So. So, a follower said that they found a disturbing something, like a reflection in the pane of the glass of the door behind him. Oh, okay. I'm... And, of course, the picture, like, won't let me zoom. Um, zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, well. Oh, well. And the picture's not available. Um, but Ellis said, I dot, 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 have no explanation for this. And the reporter said, it might have been pareidolia, the human brain's tendency to find non-existent patterns. Um, but maybe not. Okay, I could see that. That does happen very much. So, on August 14th, he tweeted, So, a weird thing just happened. Take it with a grain of salt. I bought a Polaroid camera this weekend because they're fun and dorky. I decided to take a few photos around my apartment. Um, and he just started experimenting around with it. Mm-hmm. And his first photographs turned out pretty normal. Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. I didn't expect to find anything, and for the most part, I didn't. I took a couple of my living room and bedroom. That's the rocking chair I first saw David in. They're pretty unremarkable. Um, so... Yep, nothing in those photos. Just average Polaroids, which Polaroids are actually expensive. If you I go know. to the store and try and buy them, it's like 40 bucks. Then I went into the hallway and developed a, stamped a photo. The Polaroid developed completely black. See, that's weird. I mean, it could have been a camera malfunction maybe, but like if you take a picture and it develops completely black, that's weird. I don't know about that one, sister. He took another photograph under those conditions. Okay, so it wasn't his finger. Okay, I thought I maybe accidentally covered the lens with my finger, so I took a photo while intentionally covering it. The photo on the left is me covering the lens with my finger. The one on the right is of my fully lit hallway just taken after midnight. So that's him covering it with his finger. That is him doing nothing. Okay. He said it was just after midnight, though. Oh, he said it was the fully, fully lit. lit. I don't know, girl. This is this is interesting. I have a lot of thoughts. So then he's... Um, I'll record myself sleeping in tonight, and I have Sage being delivered tomorrow. As always, I'll keep you in the loop. Okay, one last thing, because I wanted to double check. Here's a couple video... Here, Here's a couple video of me taking photos. And he is, like, with his phone... Ch- like recording as he does it. And there is a video. <laughs> We're not watching it. We don't have time for that. Yeah. Well, okay, one last thing I wanted to double check. Here's a couple. Oh, wait, I just did that. And then the hallway, another video. There's lots of videos. He's really trying to hard yeah. to like prove to people like this yes. is actually happening. To he him. is doing trying to be logic based. And it he took another picture of the hallway it came out totally black again for a second time. And he videotaped him, or I, he recorded himself mm-hmm. taking this picture. Okay, interesting. interesting. Um, someone told me to take photos from farther away, so I tried that once with my iPhone, once with the Polaroid. Left is my iPhone, right is with the Polaroid. The whole light is on both times. Why is it pitch black each time with the Polaroid? Okay. That's weird. And... So how long does this Polaroid thing go on? Like, 
We get it. The Polaroid's black. Maybe it's a yes. camera malfunction. And one thing I want to note with the Polaroid picture is I don't think he has the light off because the light from the living room would seep in and you'd be able to make out shapes. Mm-hmm. Because there's furniture in the hallway. Right, right. You can't make out anything. It is pitch black. It's like there's a black curtain hanging just on the other side of the door frame. I wonder, what does a picture like like that, like a picture like that look like before you put it in the camera and the picture is taken? Is it completely black before you take the picture? Could it be using one that before the picture was taken? Um, no, don't they come out like gray-white? I'm not sure. I've never actually used a Polaroid. Mm, you know, you look like the type. Thank you, I think. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I just wanted to see how you would react to that. Um, so folks all over the internet start running the images of the Polaroids that Ellis had posted through different photo editing programs to see what they might be able to find. And they apparently found a lot. In the picture of the two Polaroids Ellis took to compare the first one that developed black on its own um, there appeared to be a face lurking in the darkness just above the edge of the floor and on the right. You can see that face in Beardo Runner's tweet up top here, except it's no longer available. Mm, that's rough. No longer available. Yeah. Just like me. And then just in kidding. the I'm one single. of the photo, the one of the hallway, um, he lifted the exposure. Okay. And what do you see in the doorway? I guess there's like a person there, yeah. I guess. It kind of looks like a person there. Yeah. yeah. That's spooky. A fairly short person. Mm. Like a kid, one might say. Oh, David's a coming. And even the seemingly innocuous Polaroid of Alice's bedroom, and floors thought they might have found a demon in the closet. Mm, we all have demons in our closet. Cheers to that one, guys. Let me pull it up. Um, I... Kind of see it, not really. I'll let you. I don't, this is not this is my laptop. I thought it might have been dust on your laptop. Oh. That's why I oh, tried I to wipe it trying, off. I thought you were trying to zoom in. I was like, um, this is my Mac. No, I thought it might have been dust, but no, maybe it is a demon. Ooh, spooky. Spooky season. Okay. On August 14th, Adam tweeted, Folks have been urging me to get Sage. So did. And he posted a picture of him with burning Sage. Mm-hmm. So he noticed he... Oh, so he did admit that he wasn't convinced it was going to accomplish much. And the next morning he confirmed the inefficiency of the Sage. Um... So his last tweet from August 14th was, But who knows, maybe this will do something. Uh, the next morning, Sage did not work. Period. Oh. Not the passive aggressive period. David said, meet me at midnight. Also on August 15th, oh. he tweeted, I haven't dreamed about David in a few months, but he appeared again last night. In the dream, my bedroom was filled with hazy smoke, but I could see David sitting in the chair across the room. He was smaller this time, almost shrunken. He didn't do or say anything except look at me. Anyway, it feels like a bad omen. That is kind of weird. I don't know. This is all very weird. This is all very interesting. I'm excited for the climax. You've got a while to go. Oh, I want a climax. On August 18th, it's been two weeks and he still does this every night at midnight and he posted two pictures of his cat going up to the door. Okay. So late at night, that is early in the morning, Ellis tweeted a short update. His cat was continuing to hover on the front door at midnight every night. Around 3 a.m. every night, his sleep tracker started recording about five minutes of static. And that morning, he had woken up to what he thought felt like a small earthquake. Okay. Okay. Um, he remarked, he re- tweeted, it's just a whole bunch of small things happening at once. I feel so uneasy, like right before a thunderstorm comes. Everyone is telling me to move, but I don't have any guarantee that this won't follow me. Yeah, it's probably attached to him, honestly. Like, he's the one who didn't follow the rules to the game. So it's like, girl, you played the game and you lost. Later that morning, remember how... So I'm going to reread that tweet. It's just a whole bunch of small things happening at once. I feel so uneasy, like just before a thunderstorm comes. He followed that up later in the day. 
they just issued a thunderstorm warning for tonight. Ooh, okay, okay. That's getting a little weird. Okay, predicting the weather. On August 21st, he tweeted, All this ghost stuff has been spooky, but this past weekend was the first time I actually felt unsafe in my home. Thread. I had a dream that night where David was dragging me by the arm through an old abandoned warehouse. I'm not sure why I didn't fight back in the dream or how he was strong enough to pull me, but that's dream logic for you. It was a creepy dream, but I didn't think much of it when I woke up. I took a shower, then I noticed something. I'd woken up with a huge bruise on my arm. Oh my god. Okay, that is a big bruise. And it does does look like somebody was dragging him, like, or Mm -hmm. gripping his wrist. That's so weird, actually. And, like, I don't think he would do that, like, hurt himself like that. No, you cannot, I don't, so there are, so our brains have a fail-safe in them, where there are certain things we can't do to ourselves. Yeah. So, like, we can't suffocate ourselves, like, if, if we try with our own hands, our brain will literally knock us unconscious so we let go. Right. Um, technically, you could bite your finger off with the easiness of biting through a baby carrot. I didn't know that, yeah. But your brain stops you from doing it. Yeah, yeah. So, And one of those things is, like, yes, I can do that, but my brain will not let me grip my arm hard enough to create a, a bruise on my own wrist. Right, exactly. I would either have to have somebody else do it, or I would have to find, like, I don't know, like, stuff a mitt, like an oven mitt with something and tie it around. And even then, it wouldn't really work. Yeah. It, maybe it's makeup, though? Maybe. I don't know. Either way, it's spooky. So he does it. He did admit that the bruise could have some reasonable explanation. Maybe that he had injured himself during the day and didn't notice it, um, but still an odd coincidence. That's true. So he left his apartment the next day to get breakfast, something he does every Saturday. And he passed by a food cart, food cart repair depot. That's right by his apartment. Yeah. Um, he probably lives in L.A. or New York, where this yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. Um. So. so Ellis noted that he's lived in the apartment for, ye- for four years, and in all that time, he'd never seen the depot anything less than bustling, but that day, it was silent. I lived in the neighborhood for over four years, and the place has always been jam-packed with carts getting service, but today it was completely abandoned. The whole warehouse was totally gutted and empty. Mm. Okay. Well, almost empty. I went inside to look around because I was astonished that this place was suddenly empty after all these years. Basically, the only thing in the entire warehouse was a single green chair. That's weird. That's creepy. Also, the chair that dear David sits in in his room is a green rocking chair. That's fucking creepy. That's so weird. On my way back from coffee, the warehouse has been shuttered. It's remained shuttered since. So it was like open, like the big garage yeah. door was open and he was able to just walk in and poke around. And when he, by the time he comes back, it's shuttered and locked up. Well, I mean, yeah, like they don't want people up in their warehouse who shouldn't be there like him. The chair, my bruise, dreaming about an empty warehouse and then passing by one dot, dot, dot. It gives me the creeps. Spooky. August 2015th, 2017. There have been a few small developments in my apartment, but I'm not really sure what to make of them. I just know I'm scared. I have a way. Okay. So I was almost used to a routine, so when they started to cry at the door closer to 10 p.m., I was confused. They began a new routine, hover around the door at 10 p.m., cry for about 15 minutes, then wander off as if nothing's wrong. The cats. Okay, that's weird. Interesting. Interesting. Cats. Doing weird things. Um, and then Ellis dropped a bomb. Shortly after the usual cat stuff around 1030 or so, I started getting phone calls from an unmarked number. My entire call history for the past week looks like this. You'll notice that I answered once yesterday. Okay. And it's just no caller ID, no caller ID, no caller ID. Like, just repeated. That's so weird. What if it's like his mom or something and she got uh, no a new caller phone? ID. 
I only know one person who has called me and it came up as no caller ID. Mm -hmm. It was a coworker of mine. And after like a year or so, I just knew like if I say, because what would happen is she would call me and I'd see no caller ID and I ignore it. And then she would like shoot me a text message or leave a voicemail saying like, hi, it's me. And I would call her back. And then I just got used to, like, I knew it was her. So anytime I saw no call ID, I'd answer. And I would always go, hi, so-and-so. And And she would say, how do you know it's me? And I'm like, because you're the only person who comes up on my phone as no caller ID. I wonder if that's like star 69. But she wasn't. So this person might be. Yeah. Um, Oh my God. I just realized that these are adjustable. Hmm. Interesting. For those at home who don't know, star 69, if you dial star 69 and call someone, you don't show up as a caller ID. They don't know who's calling. And we used to use that as kids to prank call people. Yes, in the age of caller ID. Um, (laughs) I was talking about something else that we experience as kids that kids nowadays that don't get to experience. Childhood without the internet. Yeah. The um, family computer. Getting mercilessly beat by your parents. I was only ever spanked once. Yeah, I never actually got spanked. Yeah, I never got beat. I was spanked once by my father. And I remember it vividly because it was for a ridiculous reason. My parents were divorced. Um, And I was over at my dad's and I said that I wanted to call my mother and he wouldn't let me. So I ran for the phone and I picked it up and I started to dial and he ripped the phone out of my hand and he put me over his knee and he spanked me for it. Interesting. Interesting. And I went home and I told my mom and my mom got super pissed because he was like, well, it's my time with them. Why are they calling you? And she was like, well, when they're with me, I let like I have them call you every night. Okay. Okay. I didn't follow that story. I'm not going to lie to you. I got spanked for trying to call my mother. Okay. Just okay. to talk. Like, I wasn't even going to, te- like, I he, like it wasn't even like I was being a bitch. Like, you did this and I'm going to tell mom. It was just like, I want to talk to mommy. Yeah, as kids do, as kids do. And my, re- my rationale then to this day is, well, if when I'm with my mother, I talk to my father every night on the phone, why do I not get to call my mother when I'm with my father? Okay. There you go. Is there any other childhood trauma you would like to debrief on while we're on the Um uh, My parents' alcoholism, their smoking habits. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on! The list is on. Usually, if it's an automated thing, if you answer once, they quit calling, so I picked up. I didn't say anything, I just listened, waiting for some automated message to chime in. After about a minute, the static stopped and there was silence. I kept listening. I heard what I thought was breathing, but it was so faint I can't be sure. My heart was racing, so it was hard to hear. Then, just as I was about to hang up, I heard a very small voice whisper. Hello? Ew, I don't like that. Something about the way they said hello freaked me out. It wasn't a question or a greeting. No. Just, hello? Hello? Hello. A flat statement. So quiet, I could barely hear it. I panicked and hung up. I don't know what else to do. I closed all the curtains in my apartment and turned on every single light. So for the rest of the night, he watched TV. He was too scared to sleep, and he vowed to keep writing everything that was happening down. On September 28th, he tweeted, Anyway, last week I bought a pet monitoring camera so I can keep an eye on the cats while I'm overseas. It's basically a nanny cam that connects to the Wi-Fi so you can check it whenever you want. It runs 24-7. Yeah. So I watched the feed again. Still nothing. I watched a third time and finally noticed something. Watch the chair. I hope this is actually playing. Yes. It's playing. Okay. Oh, she's rocking. The chair's rocking by itself. And you know what they say. If the chair is a rockin', don't come a knockin'. Or lean with it, rock with it. When we gonna stop with it, lyrics that mean nothing. I hope nothing else happens tonight. Wait, WTF? Someone just pointed out that one of the blue chairs in the background disappears in the second video. What do you mean it fucking disappears? How does the chair just disappear? I thought he liked the green chair. Oh. He said, meet me up, man. Okay, and then somebody pointed out, there is no way, there is no way that's there. 
And then they followed up. Okay. And this is at Fruit Rich. Uh, wait, okay, okay. I'm just shouting them out because I'm reading their tweet. Yeah. Okay, I edited the lighting the picture a little bit, but the chair is still there. Oops. Oops. LOL. Corky girl. Um, on September 5th, Alice began a new thread with a simple yet horrifying opening. Okay. It's happening again. <laughs> Me when I text during my the, ex. During the night on Saturday while I slept, it recorded the cats in the living room. It seemed pretty unremarkable at first. But then after a few minutes, Maxwell freaks out and jumps over something invisible. Okay. Cats do that, though. Okay. If you've ever lived with a cat, you know they get... Cats play and do weird things like that. Okay. I'm sorry to, like, bring down the mood. Anyway, the next night, the camera recorded a couple more strange videos, specifically recorded R- Maxwell doing this on and off for hours. Just standing on his hind legs. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking funny, bitch. Cats don't just don't no, just do that. No, they don't just stand on their I- hind some cats do that, but like you would know if your cat does that all the time. Yeah, that cat's Ex- fucking except weird. Except if we want to rationalize this, maybe Maxwell does this all the time when Adam isn't around. That's so <laughs> and weird. And the nanny cam just happened to catch it, and like Maxwell's like, I'm a distinguished gentleman. I'm standing on my hind legs. I love crazy bread from Little Caesars. Anyway, the next. Uh, 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 sorry, I scrolled up too far. Me too. I always scroll up too far. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Honestly. Wanna... So somebody said maybe Maxwell was batting at a bug. Ellis replied he just eats them. Um, he also noted that he rarely sees bugs make their way into his apartment. Something must have spooked him. Um, in the first video, Ellis's Twitter follow spotted something very quickly. At the 18 second mark, a green glass jar sitting on the coffee table moved on its own accord. Ooh. That's weird. Okay, lots of poltergeist activity. Okay. So Max, or Adam, continues, please don't name your cats with human names. It confuses me. Mm. I just can't shake the feeling that something has made its way into the apartment. It's odd behavior from Maxwell in any event. Things feel off this week. I can't explain it. On September 11th, are you going to make a joke? No. Oh, I thought you were going to make a 9-11 joke. I don't want to get canceled, so we'll leave it for now. On (laughs) on September 11th, Adam (laughs) tweeted, I nearly said, on 9-11. Never forget. (laughs) On September 11th, Adam tweeted, I haven't gotten into the pantry. I hadn't, uh, so Adam was going about his day. I hadn't even gone into the pantry when I heard a loud crack. It's better to just watch the video since the nanny cam records everything. What does he get? Oh, it was his small, um, small knitted cactus falling from the same shelf where the stir- turtle was. Mm. Okay, I just want to... Oh, David. That's not David. That's the guy. He's in a robe. Oh, it fell. On its own. That's weird. Okay, that... Okay. Do you love how, do you love how I like try to fast forward to just the point where it happened to save time and then didn't press play? Right, we're staring at a bl- pause video. Um, as you can see, I slid the lock immediately after realizing what was going on. I also checked about four more times uh, before bed. The thing that fell was this little knitted cactus and a terracotta planter. It's totally busted now. Well, that's not the only thing that's busted. September 16th. On the pillow next to me, so he had a nightmare. On the pillow next to me was a severed head with a bloody spine attached, snaking down the bed. That it was staring right at me, somehow still alive. It had this huge smile plastered on its face. Horrified, I screamed, what happened to you? The head smiled even bigger. It feels great. The head groaned. What the fuck? That's so weird. He had another dream. When I passed the warehouse the second time, I heard a dull thunk from the other side of the shutters. I froze in place, but there was no other sound after that. I probably should have continued on, but curiosity got the better of me. Oh, no, he was actually walking by the place. That wasn't a dream. Okay. (laughs) So he heard a thunk. He heard a thunk. There... 
Um, there was a grated window next to the doors about a foot above my head, too high to see into. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to hold my phone up to the window, take one photo, then run for my life. Okay. Okay. It seemed a, to be a different part of the warehouse, maybe an office. There was a bunch of old insulation, what looked like a filing cabinet and a ripped leather desk chair. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm too deep into this and my brain wants to see David when he's not there. But here, I messed with the fillers in the photo a bit. Tell me this doesn't look like him. Okay, it does. I see it. I Okay, that could easily be done with Photoshop, though. Opacity in Photoshop. But it does very much look like a little child in that good old uh, warehouse. Which is weird when you think about children in warehouses mm-hmm. because they did abolish, uh, to much of DJ's dismay, they did abolish child labor a while back. And if I know one thing about DJ, it's that you would fully utilize child labor if it was still legal today. On October, September 27th, Adam tweeted, the past few days have been fairly quiet. I haven't been spending much time at home. I leave for Japan in a couple hours. I've been trying to avoid anything weird before my trip. I still feel like this might all, this all might stop if I just leave for a couple weeks. Whatever happens, I want to thank everyone for their kind thoughts and concerns. This whole, whole ordeal has been stressful and it means a lot. It makes me feel like I'm not going through this alone. See you in a couple weeks. Um, on September 29th, he tweeted, I bought a small, a votive tablet at the shrine I'm at in Japan. And he p- sent a picture and it says, please protect my cats while I'm away from home. Oh, poor puss. You got to protect the puss. Protect the puss 2024, honestly. So on his last day, October 3rd, um, he noticed something creepy. I was taking pictures of it from different angles when, it, since it's cylindrical. I moved around to one side and almost dropped my phone at what I saw. I felt too similar to be coincidence. I felt dizzy staring up at it. This kid with a dented head. He looks deformed. That statue looks deformed, girl. That's weird. It's I don't, a baby with a dented head. I don't like that. That's weird. On uh, October 14th, Adam tweeted, Weird things have been happening with the electricity in my apartment this week. First, two bulbs have burned out in the hallway in less than a week. At this point, I've just left it alone, rather than get a ladder again. I noticed it just sometime before dawn. Um, mm -hmm, This is more about the lights. I noticed it just sometime just before dawn when I woke up and went into the kitchen to get some water. I'd barely gone back into bed and when I saw a faint light coming on in the living room, after a few seconds it went dark again. And basically had like an LED strip behind his TV and it just randomly came on. Okay, okay. That's weird. Um, So he went to a 24-hour diner near his apartment. He was freaked out and had some eggs and then went home to shower and get ready for work. Um, and then he hears weird scratching noises outside his front door. Okay. At first, so he put his picture up to the people and snapped a picture. At first, the picture didn't seem like anything, just blurry nothingness. At, but as I analyzed and started noticing part of the face and ear and eye staring right back at me. Okay, that's weird. That very much looks like a child looking up at him through the, like, the door. Mm-hmm. What do you call that again? People. The peephole, yes. Love a good peephole. You know, I've been, I've looked through a lot of peepholes in my life and... October 29th. So instead I have a friend come, so instead I had a friend come over and cleanse the place. And for about a week or so it seemed like it worked. Things appeared to go back to normal so the cats weren't gathering at the door anymore. I stopped having dreams. But then he was walking to work and he went by the old warehouse. Mm-hmm. This time all the metal all the metal door were wide open, sunlight pouring in. The warehouse was still mostly empty except for one thing. There was a hearse pat parked near the back wall. A hearse that's interesting. Why would the hearse be in there? Right? I don't <laughs> I don't know. Okay, what's going on? 
Um, Ellis wrote that on the evening of October 25th, he was heading into the kitchen to grab a beer from the fridge when he spotted something frightening out the window, a person standing on the roof opposite of his apartment staring at him. Ellis dropped to the ground, grabbed his phone, and took a photo through the window. What is that? That's so weird. It's oh, like... wait, no, it's that. It's that. It's that. The Slender Man looking thing. I don't know. I don't know. This is weird. There's a lot going on here that I can't explain. I tried to take a better photo, but the figure had disappeared. Okay. All right. And he posted another picture. Okay, so this is not okay. Mm-hmm. It, this was just a prelude to the next set of photos. In the dream, I saw him in a chair again. I don't have the green chair in my room anymore. This time, it was a recliner I've had for years. He was staring right at me, just like the first time. Again, I felt paralyzed and could barely move, but this time, something was different. So, he started taking photos. Oh, wait, hang on. The next update came on November 6. Ellis wrote that he had a dream the previous night. A dream quite similar to the very first one about David he had way back. As in that dream, in this one, Ellis was lying in bed while David appeared on a chair nearby. This time, though, Ev Ellis wasn't quite as paralyzed as he had been the first time around. And this time, he could move his hands a bit. So when David began to approach, Ellis grabbed his phone, in the dream that is, and started to take some pictures. He woke up right as David reached his bed and began to crawl up it. Ew, that's weird. Not crawling up the bed. I don't like that. And he found this picture on his camera roll when he woke up. Oh, you can see it, like, looking at him. Ew. You can see Dear David. I don't like that. That's weird. Girl. So is ooh, David going to, like, get to him? And this is a picture when you brighten it up. Spooky. That's gonna haunt my nightmares. That's weird. Very weird. All right. November 17th. For everyone asking, yes, I'm alive. I've been on the quiet side because there's something I'm trying to investigate and I'm not sure how to yet. I'd <laughs> rather not tweet unless I have something substantial to share. For any. Um, so, the ghost hadn't won just yet. His apartment used to be. An old house that had been converted into a duplex, and yeah. he had been living on the first floor unit. Yeah. Uh, and when everything started to ramp up, he moved to the second floor. It's also hard. It's also sort of hard to explain the logistics of what I'm trying to find out, but I'll do my best. Basically, there's a part of my apartment I'm now just learning about. At least that's what I think. To refresh your memory, I live in a duplex. I used to live on the first floor. Now I live on the second floor. It's a long, boxy building with something like this. Okay, okay. Very and long. for those of you who aren't looking, go look. But he drew... Um, it's giving storage container. A little bit. Like, first floor, my old apartment. Second floor, my new apartment. Top roof that I don't have access to. And then there's a little gap. Business next door. And on top of that, roof where I think I saw David. Okay. Spooky. So I'm thinking... Um, so while he was previously, he noted that he had no access to the roof, um, but he started to hear some loud thudding noises from up there. Mm, now he's on the roof, he's climbing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was distinctly the sound of something falling to the floor. My building is old and makes lots of noises, but this was a new sound. It startled me. Um... So I'm thinking, is there some secret crawl space in my home? I look all over my apartment, but I can't figure it out. So I go into the hallway, and that's when something dawns on me. There's no real way to ease into the cell, just say it. There's a mysterious hatch in my hallway. I've always known about it, but I just assumed it opened directly to the roof. Okay, okay, so... It's really high above the stairs, so I always figured it was impossible to access with some sort of fancy professional ladder. I took this video so you can see how high it is. I'm not going to show you the video. Okay, that's fine. I see the hatch every morning when I leave for work and think nothing of it, but this time something dawned on me. It can't lead to the roof because it's actually below the roof. I'm about to spring some simple math on you, so I apologize in math. 
in advance. First, the skylight is flat with the roof. I check Google Earth to make sure. The hatch is about three feet below the skylight, meaning there's about three feet of empty space between the two openings. And he has a picture. Skylight. Okay. Interesting. So it could be like an attic or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think maybe that hatch leads to a short ladder going to the roof, but even if that's the case, the hatch is level with the ceiling in my apartment. That means there's three feet of empty space all over my apartment. That's weird. That doesn't even make sense. November 28th. A lot has happened in the last week, but I was away for Thanksgiving, so I'm just now able to write it all down. The noises from the ceiling haven't let up, but the pull I ordered didn't arrive before I had to leave for the holiday, so I didn't actually get in to pull to open the thing. Okay, okay. Till late Friday night, I planned to investigate the next morning and went to bed. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to an incredibly loud crash above me. It sounded like something... One had dropped a bowling ball. I bolted upright in bed and immediately felt strange. There was a weird energy all around me. I can't explain it. After about a minute, I heard another crash. I briefly thought about grabbing my shoes and booking it, but that would mean passing under the hatch, and that seemed like a bad idea. So instead, I just listened and waited, though I'm not sure for what. The crash happened again and then again, probably 15 times in a row, followed by a long silence. Then I heard a smaller, creaky sound from the hallway. In my mind, I registered it as a footstep, but it really could have been anything. I stayed still, but there were no more sounds after that. I lay back down, still tense and nervous, but I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up the next morning and everything seemed normal again. I got dressed and left to go get a bagel, same as every Saturday. Okay. He's going to get his bagel, mm -hmm. which I stand. I love a good bagel. Love a good bagel with cream cheese. So as he's going, he notices some debris on the stairs right below the hatch. Mm -hmm. At that point, bagels were the last thing on my mind. I went back upstairs and grabbed the pole. I set my camera on the coat wardrobe at the top of the stairs and hit record just to make sure it would be caught on video if a demon burst out of the hatch. Oops. Got a pretty long pole. Hello. <laughs> DJ, you've seen this shit before. You fucking <laughs> What even was that? Was that a genuine jump or did you jump to make me? No, jump? that was a genuine jump. Oh my god. I knew it was god. coming, I just didn't know when. Honestly, that's usually how it be. I went upstairs to get my phone and collapsed the pole, since it's so long and unwieldy, then went back downstairs to investigate the object that fell. At first I wasn't even sure what it was. It was a dingy faded black. I picked up and realized what it was. It was a small leather shoe. That's weird. A few hours later, my landlord was on a ladder shining a flashlight into the crawl space. I stared up at him, half expecting something to grab him and yank him into the darkness. He angled his flashlight around, finally saying, there's nothing up here. But then he was like, oh, wait, I watched as he reached up into the emptiness with his free arm. And when he pulled it back out, he had something small around his hand. He climbed down the ladder and handed it to me. Again, I wasn't sure what I was looking at. It was smooth and shiny. And at first I thought it was an odd old piece of candy, but I was cold and too heavy to be candy after a second i realized it was a marble it was so worn it had to register as a marble at first its shape was sort of weird with a little bump on one end sounds familiar i too have a little bump on one end december 12th sorry for the long break i haven't been feeling great the past couple weeks and haven't had time to update there also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well and I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting bouts of dizziness. Okay. So he took some pictures around the apartment. The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see me sleeping. I'd left a couple lights on just in case anything showed up, but for the first hundred or so photos, it was just me in an empty room. Okay. <laughs> Pretty boring photos. Except. Ew, that looks like one of those elf on the shelves. 
So David's definitely there. He's watching. He's coming. The dolls and the divas are there. Here, it's lighted up so you can see him in all of his deformed glory. That's so weird. I don't like that. He looks creepy. Oh, Jesus. Then suddenly he was there, standing on the chair at the foot of the bed, staring at me. In the next photo from a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling, just staring. Then he appears to collapse on the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first, I thought he was dead, but ob- which obviously doesn't make any sense. I looked over at the chair, half expecting him to still be there, but it was empty. Ew. Ooh. Not that. But then in the next photo, he's gone. The room, it totally empty again. He's gone in the next several photos, too. I feared maybe that was it. I kept swiping through the photos. About 15 photos later, he was back, standing next to my bed. It was just like the last time I'd saw him. Okay, okay. That's weird. Okay, he's like, obviously, he's coming for you, bitch. He's mm-hmm. standing on the side of your bed. That's when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest of the photos, but I knew I had to. I swiped up to the next photo, and my heart sank into my stomach. He was on the bed, inches from me, staring down at me, sleeping. Ew, what the fuck? That's gross. I don't like that. Like, oh. The next one is was worse. In the next photo, he was staring right at the camera. Hello. <laughs> That's so weird. I hate that. I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. It's expiring. (laughs) After that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again, and the rest of the scroll is just me alone in my room again. That is, until the last photo. Here's the last photo on the scroll. Ew! Not his bald ass back of the head. Fucking, he looks like Schmeagle from Lord of the Rings. Hey, Paul, you found someone with a better hairline than you. Bitch, <laughs> fuck you. You came after me, I can come after you. Coro. Not that. Um, and apparently somebody strung some of the pictures around and David moved the camera. Okay. Um, this is where Adam left it. I'm at a loss for words. That malformed ear, that stringy hair, I didn't even know what to think. I looked all over my room, but I couldn't find anything. And honestly, I've been so exhausted, I didn't know how to process it. Even now, all I want to do is just go to sleep. Okay. On December 20th, he tweeted, Hey, everyone, I'll be gone for the next week visiting family back home in Montana for the holidays. It'll be nice to get away from all this for a bit. Thanks for everyone's kind words lately. I'll see you when I get back. On January 2nd, I even started browsing listings listings for new apartments back in New York. The last thing I want to do is move in the middle of winter, but after the past few months, it seemed like it might be worth it. It felt like there might be a way out. But after a few days, I started to feel strange again. One night, I got up to go to the bathroom, and as I stood there in the dark, I couldn't help but feeling like there was something moving outside the bathroom window. So basically, David followed Ellis home to Montana. Yeah, well, when something's attached to you, they're going to follow you. That's just what it is, girl. Um, so he started to feel better, less foggy, less tired, but then he started to feel off again. But after a few days, I started to feel strange again. One night, I got up to go to the bathroom, and as I stood there in the dark, I couldn't help but feeling there's something moving outside the bathroom window. The bathroom looks out into the backyard, and it was pitch black. I could barely see anything, but it's Montana, and there are animals panting all the time. Sure enough, in the morning, I found these animal tracks through the snow. I don't know the specific animal, deer, elk. Hmm. Looks like Krampus footprints to me. I could see that. I could see that. Love a good Krampus. In the morning, as I was getting out of the shower, I glanced out the window and noticed tracks behind the garage. I couldn't tell what they were from the bathroom, so I got dressed, put on my coat, and went outside. When I got up, my heart practically stopped. They weren't tracks. They were footprints. Really small footprints. Ew, what the fuck? That's creepy. Not small footprints in the snow. Jeez. For the past few nights, I've been using that app that takes photos every couple of minutes, but nothing has shown up. That's how the, he was getting the pictures of David leaning over him. Mm-hmm. Um... 
for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work anymore, but I've left it running just in case I picked up absolutely nothing, save for one thing from last night. Last night was particularly bad. I felt sick and had nightmares all night. I dreamed that David was hovering in the corner by the ceiling far off the ground. He was mouthing something, but I couldn't hear a word. Then he was hovering above my head, staring down at me, his mouth moving faster than it should be. I couldn't move. I could only look up at him. Suddenly, he plummeted downward. I felt this huge pressure crash into my chest. I woke up gasping. The wind completely knocked out of me. I sat up and looked around, frantically heaving for air, but there was nothing. When I caught my breath, I retrieved my phone from the dresser. The photo roll showed nothing of note, save for the last photo. Oh. Huh. I don't... What's supposed to be there? What's going on? Um, it's David crashing into him. Okay, David's crashing into him. He's a crash dummy. Yeah, here's it brightened up. <laughs> he looks like he's body slamming him WWE style. Josina! It's giving very that. Oh my god. That's so funny. On January 16th, I swiped on my mentions. <gasps> he was there? <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. That was six. Excuse my... Uh, this is also twenty, like 2018. <laughs> I swiped to my mentions and saw that everyone was tweeting to me about something I posted on my Instagram story the day before. they saying they saw something weird. The stories are expired now, but I have screenshots, and I don't know how to explain it. Long story short, I went to brunch on Saturday with a friend. I posted photos to the story, and they were totally unremarkable. Here's the first two. I put it totally dumb and normal. Um, I posted totally boring brunch photos. I posted one more photo of me and my friend before leaving, and that was that. But the next day, I had a zillion messages about the third photo I posted. People had taken screenshots and sent them to me. This is what somehow got it uploaded to my Instagram story. That's weird. It looks like a glitchy photo. That's right. Mm -hmm. Something's messing with his photos now. That's crazy he had no idea what happened to it um and it kind of looks like david's face is superimposed on top of ellis's mm -hmm. so many um people said david was possessing ellis Ooh. ellis responded like i've been sleeping fine and i have lots of energy during the day but sometimes seem to sort of lose time i guess like i'll look up at the clock and realize a whole hour has gone by and i don't remember i bit tina at T tima tweeted Ah, uh, hell nah, he's possessing you. Yeah, no. I have I no know. I have no clue what happened. It looked perfectly fine on my phone when I uploaded it. I'd say it was just a glitch, but I can't make sense of what's happening with my face. Maybe I can. I know what it looks like, what it probably is. I don't know if I care anymore. I just really want things to be normal again, and things feel normal enough right now. I don't know. I guess I'll keep you updated if something else happens. I wonder if anything else is going to happen, guys. And then the cats start acting weird again. Uh, as cats do. As cats do. On February 3rd. And, like, it was really weird because it was, like, a weird shaky video. And people were, like, posting, Adam, is this you or David? Oh, my gosh. On February 3rd, Adam tweeted, everything is fine. Okay. He's fine on February 3rd. On February 6th. He tweeted, some of you already know this, but I thought I should make a short update on Twitter about it. A little over a month ago, I made the difficult decision to leave my full-time job after four years with the company. Okay. It wasn't an easy choice, but it was just became too difficult to focus on everything. I decided it was time to turn my attention towards personal projects. I'm nervous about what the future holds, but I feel good. I know big things are coming. On February 14th, Adam tweeted, please don't worry about me. I'm okay and everything will be like it was before, smiley face. Okay. He's giving content creator. Like, it's giving, like, I quit my job to be an influencer. And then there was another weird video that just didn't make sense. Okay. Um, it was showed from a low, low angle, showed Maxwell showing me meowing plaintively at Ellis's door on June... Whew, sorry. On March 12th, Ella said, for everyone asking if I'm alive, I'm doing okay. It's been pretty quiet around here lately, and I've been trying to focus on work. Of course, I'll keep you updated if anything strange happens, but for now, I'm staying busy with drawing and other projects. Good for her. Follow your passions. And then, 
On June 6th of that year, the rap broke the news that a Dear David movie was in the works. Huh. Imagine that. So, that's the story of Dear David. They made the movie. Um, Ellis still attains that this really happened to him. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, Paul? I am honestly, I am honestly very skeptical. I feel like there are a lot of explanations to a lot of these photos. I don't mean to burst your bubble about this one, but I feel no, like no, no, there's I agree. A, a lot of very reasonable, very valid explanations for this one, especially leading up like to the whole movie and him working for Buzzsprout. It's very much giving, I'm going to tell an internet... Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed, sorry. It's very much giving. I'm going to tell an internet story to get famous to profit. And like, I'm someone who I'd like to think I'm pretty good at separating people who are actually like saying like this shit's actually happening to them versus like I'm saying this for the story. Yeah. And the movie apparently was really terrible. Yeah, it probably got like 2% on Rotten In Tomatoes. In my research, one of the people, like one of the people covering it on a podcast, um, mm -hmm. listened to it, or they watched it and they were like, oh, it's fucking shite, because they were from Ireland. Right, right. And I like tried to read the synopsis on Wikipedia, and the synopsis didn't make any sense. Most of those movies don't. It's... Honestly, we're covering a lot of topics right now that people try and make, like Clown Motel, how yes. they tried to make movies mm -hmm. off of that, and they're never good. And what's awful is this, there's a whole story here. Mm -hmm. Like, all you need is a resolution, like... Yeah. And, and I, you have the movie. I, yeah, I feel like we really didn't get a resolution here. Like, no. David didn't come for him. And like, a lot of people say, like it, was, like, it was just, like, all the hype up for this movie yeah. um and that there's no resolution so that people would go see it and like what is david like a genie like i want to know does david have all the answers if i ask him shit is he gonna know everything like what's going on well paul anything else <sighs> at this point i don't have anything else to add to this dear david what are we doing? Well, What's going on? I have one question for you, Paul. Yeah. Smash or pass, dear David? I'm going to have to pass because he's a literal child. Smash or pass. Cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. Smash or pass, Adam Ellis? Adam? No, Adam could get it. Adam, if you're watching this, hit me up. Hit my line. I I'll wonder, wear my Superman costume. I wonder if he is... Queer because that was a bottomless mimosa brunch. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Said, that was a bold, that was a bold stereotype I made there. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's our own community, so we're allowed. But hey, Adam, hit me up. Hit my line. I'm here. I'll wear the Superman costume for you. I'll put the cape on. Okay. I'll keep the cape on for you. So, Paul, is that all she wrote? That is very much all she wrote. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to us. You know to like, subscribe, and follow, and you know to go into our description and get all of our socials. Also, remember, voting is very important. You can go to www.vote.org to check for your polling place because I think registration is closed by this point. Yes. And also, there's a lot going on in the world, especially with the genocide going on in Gaza right now. If you'd like to help provide resources for relief, you can go to www.unicef.org, and right on the homepage, there is a link to go to their special page for Gaza relief. Paul? Where can they find you? You can find me at my personal uh, TikTok and Instagram at Paul Ember, P-A-U-L-E-M-B-R. As usual, it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. And where are they going to mail your love letters, DJ? Well, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok <laughs> at the Real Deej Powers. And if you'd like to write me a love letter, you can address it to Dear David's Empty Warehouse, New York City. Oh, hot. And that's all she wrote. So remember, guys, always follow the rules of the creepy games and keep your crypts tight. And your corks loose. Bye. Bye. Elliot. There's a quiz nose in the warehouse.